Oh God, open us up. Open our eyes that we might see and our ears that we might hear. Open our hearts that we might feel. And then, oh Lord, open our hands that we might serve. Amen. I had the privilege of uh, last week um, presiding at a memorial service for Mr. Clyde Jackson. Uh, Clyde uh, has been a member, or was a member here for decades. He and his wife met here when they were in the singles group uh, many, many, many years ago. And he moved to Dallas to be closer to his daughter a few years ago, uh, but has continued to be uh, an important part of our congregation. He actually passed away last February, uh, really the first memorial service that we just postponed in, and uh, thinking it wouldn't be that long, you know, and finally uh, came to the point where we were able to have that service for, for Clyde. The reason I uh, want to tell you about it is because Clyde was at the Battle of Iwo Jima. It's one of the, 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 really the very last alive who was a part of that, um, of that battle. And I, I just wanted to share with you, his, his wife, Jody, um, uh, wrote some things uh, that were shared in the service by his daughter, Julie. And um, I, I want, he was a young Marine there at Iwo Jima. I want to just uh, share with you what she writes. On the fourth day he was on the island, he was a part of the 40-man patrol that was sent up to the top of Mount Suribachi, which is how he happened to be a few feet away when Joe Rosenthal took that iconic flag-raising photograph. He loved telling that he had a, con a conversation with Rosenthal before the picture was taken, when Rosenthal said, hey, buddy, would you mind moving over just a little? To which Clyde replied, sure. He loved saying that if he had known those guys were going to be famous, he would have pushed one aside and grabbed the flagpole himself. But at the time, all he could think about was that he was alive. Clyde's regiment landed on Iwo with 3,250 men and left with 300. His company landed with 250 and left with seven. His platoon landed with 50 and left with six all of whom were wounded. His squad landed with 13 and left with three, Clyde and two others, all three wounded. I mourn for those who gave their lives. They are the heroes, but I am so grateful that I got to have 64 years with Clyde Jackson. They are the heroes indeed, and we thank them for making that ultimate sacrifice. And this weekend, we are just more than grateful. We couldn't, we couldn't find way to express it, our gratitude anymore. You know, um, the heart of the Christian faith is about sacrifice. I mean, that's really the core of what it means to follow Jesus. That's the core of what Jesus did for us. Merriam-Webster uh, defines sacrifice as destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something or someone else. That's what we are called to do, sacrifice, to give ourselves away in generosity and service. We surrender something for the sake of something other. So what I want us to do today is look at sacrifice. And we're gonna look at the scripture from John 10, as well as a, a scripture from Luke 9. And um, in them, I, I, I want us to learn to, to look at really five things. The first is the model for sacrifice. The second is uh, the methods of sacrifice. The third is our motivation for sacrifice. The fourth is our choice to sacrifice. And the final is the impact of sacrifice. So let me, let's, uh, let's begin by talking about uh, for just a minute about the model for sacrifice. Listen to John 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He lays down his life. Jesus is the one who sacrifices. Now, one might say that that doesn't mean he's our model. Uh, in fact, I hear preachers, I hear people all the time uh, say, you know, Jesus died for our sins, therefore we don't have to right? Uh, the, the, the picture is that Jesus did the work, so therefore we don't have to do the work. Uh, that, that's, that's sort of partially true. 
right? Jesus did the work and we therefore are to follow Jesus in making that sacrifice, in giving of ourselves, just as, uh, just as Jesus did. Uh, l- listen to what Luke 9 says, this, this passage. Um, it's actually one that's found in uh, the other gospels as well. Luke 9, Jesus says, if anyone, I wanna make sure I don't make it up as we go here. It, then he said to them, if anyone, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. If anyone wants to be my followers, then they need to make sacrifices too. They need to sacrifice as well. Jesus is our model. Uh, we, I, we have at home one of those automatic gate openers. We have a gate that keeps our yippy dogs in the, in the yard. And so when you drive up, you push the little gate opener, the garage door opener thingy, and it, it opens the gate. You drive in and close, hit it, close the gate behind you. It's very cool. Well, it broke. It quit working. It's old. And so I called the gate company and said, hey, would you come out and fix this? And they said, well, it's really old. It, it really it doesn't, we shouldn't fix it. We just need to replace it. I said, uh, how much is that going to be? And they told me, and I was like, oh, are you kidding? That's a lot. And so I discovered that I could go online and order one myself for less than half the price. And, and I figured I can put this in myself. I, I mean, how hard could it be? So it comes finally in the mail, and um, I decide I'm going to put it in, and I set aside the time and go outside, and I'm doing pretty well. It hooks up the first part pretty easily, and then there's this control box, and um, I, I thought, can't be that hard. I'll just sort of fix it like the other one was, and I open it up, and it's just got all these wires and plugs and stuff, and so I get the instruction book out. I said, I can read the instruction book. It'll tell me. I get out the instruction book, and I began to look, and it's like reading, you know, Swahili. I, I have no idea what it says. I can't figure it out, and so uh, what do I do? I bet you know. I go on YouTube. YouTube, they has a video that tells you exactly how to do it, what plugs to put in, where they, sh- but the main thing is they show you. They have a, a guy who's actually doing it. So all you gotta do is watch what he does and you do it yourself. It is trivial to say Jesus is our YouTube, but that's the truth, right? We are to watch how Jesus lived and live that way. We, we are to watch how Jesus was willing to sacrifice and us be willing to sacrifice. The model for sacrifice, it's Jesus. So that leads me to the second issue. What are the methods of sacrifice? Uh, now, at the, um, at the time of Christ, uh, the Jewish people had many, many sacrifices. The, the Jewish religion was a religion of sacrifice. And so there were Leviticus 1 through 7, the first seven chapters of Leviticus talks about all the various sacrifices. Um, there were burnt offerings, there were grain offerings, there were sin offerings, there were guilt offerings, and peace offerings. Those were the five major methods, kinds of sacrifice. There, there were... There were um, drink offerings, libations that are poured out of oil or wine on altars. There were all of these different things that you gave. And the the purpose was that somehow in making this offering, you would appease the anger of God. God, And that somehow in that, the the gap um, that is brought about because of our sin would be closed by our offering, by our sacrifice. Well, we don't have to do that anymore because Jesus closed that gap with his sacrifice. But does that mean we don't sacrifice at all? Uh, No. We are then to follow Jesus. We don't do it because somehow it closes the gap. We do it because Jesus closed the gap for us and we then live out that sacrifice, live out that discipleship. So what does that mean for us? Well, does it mean that we, ha- that we are martyred like Jesus was? That we, um, you know, if you, you read Fox's book of martyrs of the early church, uh, the, the way they made that ultimate sacrifice was incredible. Is that what we're called to do? Maybe. But I suspect that for most of us, that's not what we're called to do. 
for most of us, we're called to, to that the method for our sacrifice is our daily living. That each day is a, is a gift to God. That we give ourselves away each day, one minute, one, one hour, one day, one year, one decade at a time, we give away in our daily life. Uh, remember Luke 9.23, where he says, um, if, if any would be my disciple, let them take up their cross daily and follow me. Romans 12 is one of my favorite, uh, uh, the first uh, two verses are one of my favorite verses, uh, particularly in the message translation. Listen first to, to how it is translated in the uh, New Revised Standard Version. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. So we don't make sacrifices of animals. We make sacrifices of our of our bodies, what does he mean? Of our lives, of the, of the flesh of our lives, the, the, the material of our lives we are to give. Here, here's the way Eugene Peterson translates it from the message. This is what I love. Here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Your nitty gritty daily life the phone call to a friend, the note of encouragement, the visit to the retirement home or to the hospital, the way you stop to help the guy on the side of the road, uh, even your, your parenting, even your work at, at your workplace, all are given as an offering to God. I um, ran across a book by Douglas Kane McKelvey, and it's called Every Moment Holy. And one of the entries is called A Liturgy for the Changing of Diapers. I'm going to read to you just a piece of it. Heavenly Father, in such menial moments as this, the changing of a diaper, I would remember this truth. My unseen labors are not lost, for it is those repeated acts of small sacrifice that like bright ragged patches are slowly being sewn into a quilt of loving kindness that swaddles this child. I am not just changing a diaper. By love and service, I am tending a budding heart that rooted early in such grace-filled devotion might one day be more readily inclined to bow to your compassionate conviction, knowing itself then as both a receptacle and reservoir of heavenly grace. So take this unremarkable act of service, necessary service, O Christ, and in your economy, let it be multiplied into the greater outworking of worship and faith, a true investment in the incremental advance of your kingdom across generations. Open my eyes that I might see this act for what it is from the fixed vantage of eternity, O Lord, how the changing of a diaper might sit upstream of the changing of a heart, how the changing of a heart might sit upstream of the changing of the world. Amen. <laughs> Just the nitty gritty of life given as an offering, even the changing of a diaper. Sometimes that daily life can feel like a grind, right? We just get, we just get tired. Last week, um, we had the incredible privilege of hearing um, uh, Christina Wells sing, and she sang that um, beautiful song, you know, backed up by the Rob Landis Trio and St. Luke's Gospel Choir. She sang Up to the Mountain. And there was this in one verse that just hit me right in my feelings. She said, sometimes I feel like I've never been nothing but tired and I'll be walking till the day I expire. Sometimes I lay down, no more can I do. But then I go on again because you asked me to. Sometimes sacrifice is as simple as going on again just getting up and taking the next steps forward. We give ourselves away. That's the methods of our sacrifice, daily life. Now, uh, the uh, third thing is to ask, what is the motivation for our sacrifice? Um, 
What, 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 why do we do it? Clyde Jackson, whom I mentioned at the beginning of the service, um, his wife Jody shared that he really never talked much about Iwo Jima. But on the 60th anniversary of the battle, um, he, because he was a survivor, was asked to share in various places and connect with others, and he began to talk. Here's what she said. When he finally started talking about Iwo Jima, the very first thing he said was that not one day had passed in 60 years that he had not thought of the men he fought with. He loved those guys, his own particular band of brothers, and so far as we know, he was the last to survive. He loved those guys. He, he was a poet, and he wrote this poem called Forever Young. Let me read it. After all these years, I still think of them often. I still see their faces. Their names were John and Clayton, George and Ted, Chief Charlo and... Carl and so many others. They were different in height, their weights varied. Some were smart, some were average. Some were plain, some were handsome. But in the most terrible way, they were all equal. A bullet smashing into your skull did not care about your height or weight. The deadly shards of the mortar round did not care if you were average or smart. The artillery shell Shrapnel piercing your body did not care if you were plain or handsome. You were all equal. Looking in the mirror, I see how much I have changed in the past 71 years. But those faces of long ago will always live in my heart, forever young. December 2010. Why? Why do we sacrifice? We do it for people, for the people we love. Oh, well, listen to the scripture that we read a minute ago from John 10. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for my sheep. Why? Because I care for them. I love them. Look, pe people don't, don't sacrifice Real, real sacrifice is not for a principle, it's for people, right? Those who we remember and give thanks for on Memorial Day did not die for a principle, they died for you and me. Jesus did not die for a religion, Jesus died for you and for me, for people, for love. The motivation for our sacrifice is always love. All right, here's the fourth thing. So, so we have looked at the model. We have looked at the methods. We've looked at the motivation. The fourth thing is to, is to recognize that there is a choice in sacrifice and the choice of sacrifice is, is ours. We choose it. Listen to what the scripture says. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. Sacrifice is not something that's done to us. It's something we do. There's a difference between, between being a victim and choosing to be vulnerable and give yourself away. But he says, when someone slaps you on one cheek, you turn your other to them is to say, I'm gonna make a choice about how I'm gonna live my life. You haven't defined me. I'm gonna choose what I do. Um, we can't say that someone did something to us and that made us a sacrifice. We choose to be vulnerable. We can't blame others. We claim responsibility for our own lives and make a choice to give ourselves away. It's the way of life we choose. All right, so th those four, I want, I want to close perhaps with the most important one and that's the impact of sacrifice. Here's, here's what the scripture says. I came that they may have life, that they might have life and have it abundantly. Right? The, the, the impact of our sacrifice is abundant life. 
Uh, I've been reading to you from Luke 9 periodically, and uh, let me just share um, the next verse, Luke 9, 20, 24. So we started with 23. If anyone, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? What a, what a counterintuitive thought that we give our lives away in order to gain abundant life, to receive that incredible gift of a life of purpose and meaning. In, in 1955, a young missionary named Jill Elliott was a part of a group who went to Ecuador uh, to uh, work with an indigenous tribe called the Warani tribe. This uh, tribe was known for their vicious ways, these cycles of vengeance and violence that happened in, internally among the tribe, as well as uh, their um, uh, violence against anybody who kind of came, came near. And uh, Jim Elliott was part of a group of, of five um, missionaries who wanted to share God's love with them. And so they began flying over and dropping gifts uh, for them. And then the Waranis, they would land far away. The, the, the Waranis would take gifts and leave them for them. And they would, so this relationship was developed over a, over a period of the fall of, of 1955. And in uh, 1956, they established a, uh, or, or rather at the end of 55, they established a camp on um, a, uh, a beachhead that's uh, there on a river bank. And it was a few kilometers from the Wirani tribe um, villages. And um, on January 8th, 1956, Jim and his four colleagues were attacked and killed by, the, by warriors from the Warani tribe. It was, um, it was uh, on the news around the world. Life Magazine did a, um, a photo essay on it. Um, it was really tragic. But in, in the... In the months before that, when he was still flying and being a part of dropping those uh, gifts, he kept a journal. And um, on October 28th, he wrote this in his journal, and it is perhaps his best known quote. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain that which he cannot lose. What a beautiful reflection on Luke 19. Elliot was only 29 years old. He left an a infant daughter, a baby daughter, behind. Here's what's most amazing. His widow, a woman named Elizabeth, and the sister of one of the other missionaries who was killed went back, went back to Ecuador to work with the Orani tribe. They went as part of uh, SIL International, what's now SIL International, which is a, a linguistics mission that teaches language. And over time, through the work of so many, those cycles of violence um, have been mitigated and almost eliminated. Um, and the Warani tribe still remains indigenous, uh, an indigenous people with its own culture, but much of the violence is, is gone. But what an incredible statement. He's no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Friends, we have the opportunity to give our lives away every day in a daily way, modeling our lives after Jesus. And as we do that, what we gain, you know, we can't hold, we can't keep our lives. It's not like we can say, all right, I'm going to hang on to it because it goes day after day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. You only get one of them and you can't keep it back, can't hold it on to it. So as we give it away, what we get back is abundant life, a life that is full of purpose, is amazing and is abundant and is eternal. He's no fool who, who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Gracious God, we thank you for those who have, have given their lives for us we thank you for those who've given their lives a little piece at a time for us out of their love. 
And we pray, God, that, um, that we would take hold of that, that model that you uh, set for us, that model of giving our lives away. We thank you especially, God, for the sacrifice of your son who came that we might have that uh, incredible relationship, that abundant life in you. Show us how to give ourselves away, that we too might experience the joy of abundant life. Amen. So we always want to uh, uh, challenge you to take the next best step forward for you. Um, I don't know, I hope perhaps for you it is, if you haven't made an, uh, a commitment to our Transformed campaign, I hope you'll take the time to look at the website, uh, stlukestransformed.org, and um, think about, pray about your commitment. It may be that it's time for you to sign up for a summer Bible study, a summer study, and say, this summer I'm going to spend my time uh, studying and studying scripture and learning uh, as part of a discipleship group. So um, just don't stay stuck. Just take that next best step for you. Our uh, closing uh, song, closing hymn, is about sacrifice. Uh, what wondrous love is this? Let's sing together.